the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Today I'm going to show you how to swap your Ice River KS3L control board out for a KS3M control board. Um, Ice River overclocking and control board swapping has of course come along with some hiccups, frustrations, scammers, controversy, all that. But hey, that's what happens when you're trying new things and pushing the envelope in crypto mining. I'm just a regular guy and a miner who wants to have fun and show you guys how to do some crypto stuff. But I wanted to briefly explain the backstory about the control board that I'm using today. So I received the control board I'm using from T-Swift. Uh, about a month ago before the KS3M control boards were available for sale through Ice River, some Chinese suppliers found that by duplicating a certain memory chip from the KS3M control boards and custom soldering them into the KS3L control boards, you could essentially overclock your KS3L to run like a KS3M. So at the time, that was assumed to be the only method to overclock a KS3L. But then apparently, uh, Dev XYYS, who now T-Swift has partnered with, discovered how to root access overclock the machines. Um, then he began providing the overclocks as a service um, for the KS0. And then later on, it sounds like an unencrypted version of his firmware was released. And then it seems like maybe the public began reverse engineering it and arrived at the you know, same overclocks that you, know, you could use on a KS3L. So it's kind of all out there now. Um, things moved fast and things have changed very quickly. So I just wanted to disclose the info to you right off the bat uh, because the control board I'm using today is a custom control board that I received from T-Swift. So it's not a stock control board. But if you check on my Discord, uh, some people like my buddy, my faffling friend, Fully Electric, um, they've been able to upgrade their KS3L's hash rate from 5 terahash to 6 terahash simply by swapping out the stock KS3L control board for a stock KS3M control board. Uh, these control boards weren't available when I was looking into this a while ago, um, like I said before, and I don't even think the Ice River firmware was available back then, but things are changing fast. Things change fast in crypto. So anyway, um, yeah, check it out. Like uh, Fully Electric swapped out his KS3L control board for a KS3M control board, and he's getting um, nice, stable hash rate here's his hash rate on his web gui and he, yeah 30 minute average 63 46 giga hash per second so so fully electrics ks3l with the ks3m control board looking really good um before we get into showing you how to do the control board swap a couple more things i wanted to talk about just trying to avoid getting scammed here um a new discord member of mine uh mathos um he posted a couple of questions and he showed us a screenshot from someone that he bought a control board from. Uh, it's called service at ZeusBTC.com. And apparently they sold him a control board. And when he installed it, one of the hash boards wasn't working. And then now these guys are trying to hit him up for 250 bucks um, to pay for some program to get it working. So it kind of sounds like a bait and switch or like they manipulated the firmware. Um, this is what I was saying. It sounds like they sold you an Ice River control board with manipulated firmware, and now they're blackmailing you for more money to get it to running right. So just be careful of scams like this, guys. I mean, we see now that a stock control board um, from a KS3M should work on a KS3L. So there's no need to go through these weird um, DM back alley uh, methods anymore. Just just wait for KS3M boards to come available on Ice River's website and see if that works for you. 60 bucks, um, maybe pay for the quicker shipping so it gets you a little faster. Test it, see if it works, or if maybe there's some free overclocks that get released. Um, you know, you could try that and then revert to the old firmware. There's there's different methods now um, where you don't have to pay some some guys that you never heard of for for software. Just be careful not to get scammed. Now, I want to talk about the power supplies real quick, and then, then I promise we'll get to the, the point of the video, which is showing you how to swap the control board. Okay, so let's talk about the power supply. The sticker on the power supply for the KS3M says it can handle 3,400 watts, um, but if you look at IceRiver.io, they offer a single PSU for all three miners, the KS3L, the KS3M, and KS3, suggesting that they all use the same exact power supply. Um, the website says 300 amps, 12 volts. Um, it suggests that basically that this power supply should be able to do 3,600 watts. Um, the problem with Ice River is they change things all the time. 
the website isn't very accurate. Uh, for example, originally the KS3L said it would take 3,200 watts, but once they started hitting miners like myself, um, we discovered the website was wrong and the KS3L actually only pulls about 2,750 watts, as you can see on my um, meter box power display here. Uh, by the way, I have a, um, a discount code for meter box if you want to check it out in the description. Um, and then also, I, if you're going to try to a, attempt to swap your control board for the KS3L over uh, to the KS3M, because of this weird power supply rating, it says 3,400 3, watts, but an overclocked KS3M is probably going to pull 3,200 watts. I would highly recommend um, switching over to a Fruition Designs kit uh, and putting an external AC Infinity fan on to redu reduce the burden of running the fans off of an already taxed power supply unit. Um, if you want to buy a Fruition Designs kit for the KS3L, KS3M, um, they, they use the same kit it looks like now. Um, you can go to uh, Fruition Designs website, fruitiondesignsllc.com, and you can get 15% off if you use my discount code greater good. Um, I would I would definitely recommend taking the burden of running the fans off of this thing. Um, they take a lot of wattage. Um, check out my Fruition Designs install video where I put one of these kits in an AC Infinity fan and do a lot of testing. Um, I'll leave the link to that video in the description. Um, you can see that you pull a lot less wattage um, and it's a separate um, 120 volt plug for the AC Infinity fan that you'd have to use. So you take all that burden off of the machine and the machine can just run the, the hash boards and the control board without the extra power from the fans. So I feel like that's the safer way to do it. That's why I recommend this. Um, so last thing before we get into the how to section of this video, if you do this, you're doing it at your own risk. I'm not an electrician or an ASIC ex expert. I'm just showing you what I'm doing today for entertainment purposes. I'm going to swap this board out. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. If you decide to do this on your own, um, it's at your own risk. So just want to get that out there. Anyway, let's finally get into it. I'll show you how to swap the control board. Okay. So here's the control board that I got from P Swift. It looks very similar to the KS3M control board you'll get from Ice River. And I'm gonna show you how to get into it. Remove your Greater Good Mining mouse pad. Um, so if you saw my other Fruition Designs kit installation video, um, you'll know there's, there's this control panel cover that you have to take off. And there's screws on the top that you have to remove. Drag this thing over here. You're gonna remove the top two screws that are here right here and right here on both sides, front and back. And then we'll be able to slide this control panel, panel cover off. So let's do that first. In the next clip, you'll see the control panel removed. Okay, so the control panel cover has been removed and now I need to remove and swap over my sp uh, fan spoofers, the um, spoofers that I installed in my KS3L Fruition Designs Kit video. Um, like I said, I'll leave the link to that video in the description if you want to check it out. So I need to swap those spoofers over to my um, new KS3M control board. But if you have stock fans, you'll see wires plugged into these exact same spots where my spoofers are. It's the same process. Just unplug those fans from those spots um, if you have a stock uh, KS3L you'll you'll see what it looks like uh, if you watch my fruition design video so next step you'll see the fan spoofers attached to my new modified control board okay next step that we need to perform in order to slide the control board out there are two screws here like next to the ethernet and next to the um, ip report button the reset button here you need to unscrew these two screws to remove this face plate here and then you will be able to slide the control board forward out of the machine. I'll show you after these screws are removed what it looks like and how to slide the board out. Okay, now that the screws have been removed, you can see I took the faceplate off here and now the control board can slide forward out of the machine. And obviously we need to disconnect these wires and reconnect them to the new control board. So just take note of where the wires are 
it's pretty easy. Um, there's only, yeah, just five left to do. I mean, how easy is that? So we're gonna unplug these wires and then we're gonna plug it into the new control board. Okay, old board should just slide right out. New board should slide right in. Now we're just gonna plug everything back in. Okay, so control board is re rewired. And then I'm just gonna put the face plate back on, just like you saw me take it off in the first place. And then we'll show you the next step just to put the control panel back on. Just make sure all the holes are lining up with all the buttons and lights. Okay, stock faceplate is screwed back on. Bam, bam. We'll put the cover back on. And then next shot you'll see is gonna be me out in the garage, plugging it back in and watching it on the web GUI, we'll see how it goes. Just make sure you're not pinching any wires when you put this cover back on and just put those um, four screws back on that I showed you the front and back. Um, back backwards of what we just did. Just put the top two screws back in on, on the top corners. Okay, we'll give it a minute to warm up and we'll see what goes on in the web GUI. Hopefully it just shows up. Okay, so you guys saw it start up. Um, no smoke, didn't smell any smoke, didn't see any smoke, so that's a good sign. Um, I uh, got into the web GUI, no problem. I reset up the miner like you would when you're setting it up brand new. Uh, you got to put your um, stratum for your your pool in there. I'm using K1 pool. You got to put your wallet, you know, all that in there, and then reset your password, uh, which I did, and restarted the miner. So don't forget once you do this modification, you're gonna have to reset the miner like it's brand new. But check it out. Here we are. It's been running eight minutes, um, five minute hash rate, almost eight tera hash. Uh, wow, that's that's awesome. It'll settle in once once the you know like has a time to run on the pool and all that. So, uh, but yeah, it's saying normal hash rate, uh, normal fan speed because it got the spoofers on there with the AC Infinity fans. My intake temps are like mid to high 30s. My uh, exhaust temps are mid to high 50s, mostly mid 50s. Um, so I did turn the AC Infinity fan up one notch just to make sure that this thing stays cool while I'm getting used to it. Uh, my other KS Riel, I had the fan at six. I got this one at seven. I've been watching it for a little while and the temps look good. So um, I'm gonna give it some time to run and I'll check back with you guys in a minute. Okay, <laughs> um, damn. The 30 minute hash rate has been like 6,900 giga hash, almost seven tera hash. I mean, it is going up and down a bit. Um, just kind of looks like the web GUI the way it used to look like before the firmware updates, but um, average 30 minute hash rate, 6,900 giga hash and 0% rejected shares at the pool. And it's been running for almost 40 minutes like this. Um, my temperatures are just the same as when I started, like uh, mid to high 30s on the intake side. And I'm getting like mid 50s on the exhaust side. So this thing is running really nice. I am not sure if you can expect to get this kind of hash rate from um, a stock KS3M board, um, but people look like they're getting, you know, just over um, like 6,300 giga hash from what I've seen on my uh, Discord. Um, I don't know, man, maybe mine's a factory freak or maybe um, the board that I got from T-Swift has a little something special to it, a little bit of witchcraft thrown in there. Um, I don't know. All I know is I'm very happy with this result. I'll uh, show you guys uh, the wattage that I'm pulling. Okay, so... You can see the meter box is showing about 3210 to 3215 watts being pulled. That's just the ASIC itself. Um, the burden of the fans has been lifted from the power supply unit 
and put on the AC Infinity fan you see in this picture here. Um, the AC Infinity fan is running off a 120 volt separate plug. So now the PSU is running a little bit less wattage. And I like that because the sticker on the side of the PSU is saying it can handle 3,400 watts. And as you can see, I'm pulling 3,200 watts without even running the fan. So that's just a little too close for comfort. I'd highly recommend getting a Fruition Designs Kit and AC Infinity fan for these things. Okay, I'm back in the web GUI one more time. I just wanted to give it a little bit more time to see what the average hash rate would be after a little bit more uh, time. So it's been about an hour and 10 minutes, and we are getting 6,100 giga hash per second on a 30 minute average. Five minute average saying 7,154 giga hash. Um, I want to watch this thing on the pool side uh, for a 24 hour average on K1 pool. Um, for now, I wanted to get the video out there and show you guys that this is possible. It's not that hard to do. And you can get one extra Terra hash out of this thing for pretty cheap. So um, it's pretty cool. Still 0% rejected shares. My temps are still good. Um, mid 30s, like I said, um, in the previous clips, and I'm about mid 50s for my exhaust with the AC infinity fan at seven. I am very happy with these results. Um, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. This has been fun, actually. So um, I hope this video was helpful to you and uh, interesting. If it was, please consider liking, uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions, I'll try to help you. Um, and if you liked it enough, please subscribe to my channel. It would be great. It would help me out. I don't get paid to do any of this stuff. It's just for fun. And uh, it would help support my channel if you like, subscribe, follow all that fun stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. And last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.